Yes, you guys, welcome back. I'm EFC. This is Blue Lines TV, and today, today was the day that the fixture list for the 2021 season was finally revealed and finally announced. But anyway, you guys, let's get straight into things. I'm going to give you my thoughts and predictions, starting with the first month of the new season. Of course, that's the three games we're playing in September. Now, Brighton being our first game of the new season, I mean, that's a pretty good team to play against. Brighton are known for their ability to play out from the back, they like to play football, they like to keep things open at times, and for us, a team that is amazing on the transition, that is the perfect type of game we love to play. For me, it has to be a guaranteed three points, I mean, it has to be. This then follows on nicely to the second game of the season, and that's a massive one against Liverpool. Now, for me, I'm seeing things a bit differently, I feel that this is maybe the perfect time to play against one of the big boys. Number one, we get to analyse and test out our new signings. We get to see how they cope against uh, a Premier League winner. And I think the benefit you get from a game like this is that if you get the win, if you get the three points, that confidence booster, that confidence booster you're going to get from that win is going to give you that momentum that carries forward into the next month. For me, you guys, I'm excited. I want to see Kai. I want to see Vana. I want to see Ziyech playing against them. It's going to be a big one, you guys, but... I do feel like we could get the win in that game versus Liverpool. To so wrap up the month of September, we play the final game of the month against West Brom. Now West Brom, you know, newly promoted West Brom, they came second in the championship. They've recently done some amazing business. They've signed Matez Pereira on a permanent deal. And this guy was absolutely unreal for them last season. And West Brom aren't the same West Brom that used to play under Tony Pulis. Right now, Slavon Village is their manager and he's brought in a pretty decent style of football. They like to play on the ball. They exclusively use a 4-2-3-1 and they like to have their attacking players move more in field to allow the fullbacks to bomb forward. So, you know, these are three footballing teams we're playing against and I'm hoping that these are three wins we get in the month of September. In October, we play at home against Crystal Palace and, you know, Palace are a team that I fear for for next season. You know, I feel like they can't really invest too much as well. And for me, I think this would be an early start to get an understanding of how we're gonna cope against teams that park the bus. How are we gonna break down these low block teams? What are players like Ziyech, Havertz, etc., etc., gonna bring to help unlock those defenses? So that's gonna be an interesting game. And after the Palace game, the next home game is against Southampton. Now, Southampton are starting to spend a bit of money in this window. Not many clubs in the Premier League are doing that right now. So far, they've signed young Ghanaian defender Salisu. They've signed Carl Walker Peters. They're close to signing Christian Pulisic's boy and Weston McKenney. You know, they are a decent team that also like to use that mid block. They like to play out from the back as well. And they'll pose a decent test. Right after that Southampton game, you guys, we have a Manchester United game away from home. Now, for me, we need to get revenge for that 4-0 defeat we picked up at the start of last season. I mean, that was a terrible start, but I think we all knew that that game did not reflect our season. We saw positives in that game. We saw some great attacking football. And I think we saw enough to know that, okay, once we like fine tune some certain details, we're going to be a pretty solid team. I'm looking at Manchester United right now, from Jaden Sancho straight to David Brooks. I feel like it's going to be a summer where they're not going to get the signings they're hoping for. I feel like United needs to strengthen them in field and in defence, which I don't see them doing. And to be honest, I think they're definitely there for the taking the next season, you guys. And to end the final game in October, we play Burnley away from home. Now, I was happy with our performances against Burnley last season. We got the double over them. And a team like Burnley, they are quite difficult. You know, the way they just uh, pack the defences. I think it's testament to Sean Dyche's managerial capabilities. But I think as every season starts, Burnley get that bit weaker and weaker. So I'm expecting a guaranteed three points against them. Now, you guys, we do move into November. And the first game of the new month is going to be at home against Sheffield United. Now, last season, we picked up a 2-2 draw against them. And, and that's because we were leading that game 2-0 before the second half came. I feel that United have shown their credentials. They're a team you have to take seriously. They're a well-balanced team. The way they create the overloads down the flanks as well. You know, it's a very unique style of football and it's a breath of fresh air in my personal opinion. Next season, we need to show the levels. We have to show the improvement from last season and getting a win against Sheffield United is the perfect way to show just how far we've come. So they're going to be a great test. 
after that we have Newcastle at home and you know the interesting thing about last season is that we picked up more points away from home than points at home now I think the main reason for that is that most times we play at home teams really park the bus you know teams are the away team and they want to keep their shape and keep their balance so against teams like Newcastle who you know let's not forget they beat us last season in the 94th minute getting that one nil win they're the type of team that we need to break down they're the type of team that we have to show our concentration in they're the type of team where we can't make mistakes from set pieces with the players we've signed we really want to see them breaking down this type of opposition so i do have some you know positive hopes against newcastle and of course you guys end the month we play against tottenham at home now last season we absolutely humble spurs twice we absolutely outplayed them and for me i feel like it could be the case again for next season i look at jose Mourinho, you guys and he's not the same manager i'm looking at spurs i see no organization their counter attacks and i feel that they're a team that literally just defends hope and pray we are a much better team right now we have a philosophy we have a style of football and i think that next season spurs are gonna suffer against us even more and now you guys we move into december and as you guys can see on screen that's six games in the month during these periods like this during the christmas periods we tend to struggle at times you know the power ups from games they start to overwhelm us and for me this period in particular is why we want depth and quality depth in this team lampard has to rotate heavily as the season does go on there are so many difficult games in this month and to start with the first game of december we move on to leeds united now for you guys that don't know we have a historical rivalry against leeds i'll give you guys a small story the last time i was at a game where we played leeds was all the way back in i think the 2002-3 season that was when James Milner made his debut, I think, as a 16-year-old. He scored a goal in that game and we lost it 2-0. So for me personally, I'm hoping for a little bit of revenge, you guys. But, um, you know, it is interesting too. How can we forget the controversy that happened with both managers with Bielsa sending spies to spy on Derby's training sessions? So could we see something like that again? <laughs> Probably not, you guys. It's not our problem. But, you know, it is going to be a pretty entertaining game. And again let's see what happens next after that are two difficult away games against everton and wolves now with everton they really are a team that you have to play well against if you want to get those three points there's been a few times over the past few seasons where we've gone there we haven't been fully on point and they've battered us every single time let's not forget last season we lost 3-1 against them and they're the type of games we can't be fumbling or messing up anymore you guys it's the same thing against wolves and you know what it actually kind of surprised me just how well we did against wolves last season of course doing the double over balls was a big thing and you know they are a great team that play really well so they were very impressive wins against them let's hope we continue that same form for next season you guys and then right after that we have the london derbies the first one against west ham and you know playing against west ham near the end of december it's a bit of a risk you know they're a team that traditionally will just park the bus defend really deep and you know when you're playing in a very heavy december period players could be feeling their legs getting heavier so let's hope around that time we don't have any serious injuries lampard is heavily rotating the team as well because if that's the case i feel like right now with our new squad we have solutions against teams like west ham and then right after that you guys we have arsenal away and I feel like our records at the Emirates Stadium hasn't been too great recently. I think that, of course, we need to get revenge after that FA Cup defeat against them. For me, it was so unfortunate and unlucky. Injuries really cost us in that game and terrible refereeing. So that's one thing I won't forget. But against Arsenal, it seems like Arteta is starting to slowly build some identity again at the club. They could be a potential back three team with Gabriel, Luis and Saliba. That could be quite dangerous. And with Arteta being a great tactician too, I feel like the games versus Arsenal are going to be very tense games. And I'll be interested to see how we cope against them. And then to end the month, you guys, we have our final game at home against Aston Villa. Let's hope that we get the win. I have a feeling that Villa could get relegated for next season. They just survived by the skin of their hair, you guys. And if Greedy should leave them, I feel like... Aston Villa would have no hope for next season. So for me, that is the perfect game to end the month because we move straight into January and the first game of the new month is against Man City. Now, Man City at home is going to be a tense game. 
I feel that this will be a big test really get an understanding at that point of just how well adjusted the team is, how well balanced and how cohesive the new signings are with the new team. I feel against Man City we could see a different type of game to that 2-0 win against them during the restart period. You know, I feel uh, optimistic, I feel ready to and I feel really excited to know, okay, we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe football wise with the new signings we've made for next season. Right after that, we have Leicester City and we picked up two draws against Leicester last season. I think we have to break that hoodoo and get a win. It wouldn't surprise me if Ben Chirwell played a part in that victory, but you know, let's see what happens. You know, it's going to be an exciting period. And to end the month, you guys, we have Fulham, our little brothers just down the road in London. Fulham, London Derby. That'll be a nice game. I feel that Fulham could struggle a bit for next season. But with Scott Parker, he has brought some great defensive coordination and cohesion. So it's one of those games where when I mean, it's a London Derby, you have to take it serious because you know if you're not on point, it can cost you the game. And of course, end the month, you guys, we also have Wolves and Burley in this period too. We move on to February and we have another five games to play. So this is gonna be a jam-packed Premier League season. I think around this period too, in this month in particular, that's when you get an understanding of the teams that might be challenging for the title, who could be most likely to get a top four finish and who might get the rest of the European spots. So to kick off the month, you guys, we play against Tottenham away. And you know, there could be a possibility that if Tottenham don't have a great season, Mourinho might not even be there. So that could be just a completely different game that we can't even think about or comprehend. We then have two away games for Sheffield United and Southampton too, followed by two home games against Newcastle and Manchester United. In this month, you guys, there are a variety of teams that play football differently, use different tactical setups, and when you barely have any time in between games, these are the periods where you need to have your A1 game plan on point. And I do think with our new signings, we are gonna see some special, special football, you guys. With that game against Man United, it's gonna be interesting to see just how close both teams are in the table. For example, could United be fine for European sport or could they be a lot lower down the table? Who knows? But it's definitely one of those games where you have to pick up the win because that can be key for game momentum. And now you guys, we take things forward to the month of March and we have three interesting games in this period. Now, normally in March, that tends to be the periods where if you're a team that's mounting a title challenge, this is a key month. Let's hope during that period, you guys, we are high up the table. And to start the month, we play against Everton at home. And I think with Everton, as I said, they're a team that you have to focus for because if you play well, you can get that win. But if you're not focused, if you aren't playing on point, they really can punish you. Right after that, you guys, we then go straight down to Helen Road, playing against Leeds United away. You can imagine if fans are back in the stadium during that time, the Leeds fans are going to be absolutely mental. You know, I might even go down to, you know, I do like to see your leads. I think that'll be quite a fun night out. But right after that, you have to hope that you get that win against Leeds because there could be a decisive pivotal game against Liverpool right after that. Liverpool, I do think that their season could be quite interesting. I think right now, the fact they can't really sign players and commit to them is a big advantage in our favor. Normally in football, managers, their systems tend to have a lifespan of about four years. And last time this happened, Klopp was at Dortmund and they had a very bad last season. So I think there could be something similar versus Liverpool. I think that teams now are starting to understand how to play against them a lot better. And if Liverpool can't sign Thiago, because he is key to what Klopp wants, then I feel like they might not be that super powered team that they were last season. And now you guys, we take things forward to April and to be honest, this is probably the best, best fixture list period out of this entire season. We're playing against four teams, four teams that could be in the bottom half of the table. And around these periods, yeah, it's one of them ones where if you are falling behind the pack, these four games are winnable. This could be 12 points. This could be a points booster that you wouldn't get at any point during the season. West Brom, Palace, Brighton and West Ham. I mean, that's great. And who knows? Let's hope that by the time we get to April, we are mounting that title challenge. We're up there because if that was the case, you guys, April could be key for us to potentially secure the league for next season. And now, you guys, we move on to the month of May. And as I said for the April month, you know, 
this is a key month that we have to pick up wins because in May, we play against five teams. We have two London derbies, we have a game against Man City, we play against a Leicester City team that could be fighting for a top four spot, and of course, we end the season playing against Aston Villa. Yeah, difficult games, difficult periods. Let's hope, God willing, we have some momentum and, you know, a, a, a bit of a points gap to help us through those difficult moments. The game versus Man City could be key. That could be a massive game. If we potentially got to a title race and we got right to the wire, a win versus City could be massive. Knowing that we play Arsenal right after that as well, I feel like it's one of those months where you could most likely afford one loss, but you have to be on point in the remaining games. I see winnable games versus Fulham. I see challenging games versus City and Arsenal. I see a potential winnable game against Leicester City and of course against Aston Villa as well. Now let's hope versus Aston Villa that this potentially could be an easy game because maybe our fate's been secured before we have to play that game. <sighs> yeah, you guys, that was the 2021 Premier League fixture list. As you can see, things are looking serious. Things are looking very, very serious. I do think that the next season, we are good enough to mount a title challenge. I'm not saying we're favourites, but I do think we have the quality, we have the manager, and we have the players as well to mount a potential challenge for next season, you guys. So let's see what happens. And on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. I'm in the FC, the Sears Blue Lions CV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos.